to enhance PV. So looking forward to that one. But right now we got Peepnut fresh off of Peepnut's cacophonous clash. Now we're on to right here on KML and Game on GC presents Dick Drift 4. I want to see what Peepnut can do now invading MTBA after we tried to make him defend the house unsuccessfully. Yeah, I think Peepnut has a pretty decent track record versus Steve. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I don't think these two have ever played before. Um, but Peep is, if anything, he's a student of the game. And whenever there's a big threat like Steve here, you know he's got some answers cooked up. I'm curious to see what those answers are because um, this is a character that I feel like it's a trick question. You think you yeah. have the answer, but uh, but he's Steve, so you don't. That's true, but then again, you ask Peeb, Mega Man loses no matchups. So really, yeah, that's what he says. He thinks uh, this character is insane. You might have seen Tweak using this character a little bit lately. That's because Peebnut talked him into it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I really do think that this character is incredibly underrated. The biggest problem too. with it is that I feel like you either have to just wear your hands out with the Z-Drop nonsense, or you have to win neutral. And this is a game that as it's as it's evolved, not devolved, excuse me, it feels as though neutrals become less and less important. Like a lot of characters like, I'm going to go ahead and have my skips going, I'm going to deal you 70 damage, and then it's up to you to recover. That is certainly true. You know, the big, uh, not just the touch of death characters, but just any character with a really, really strong advantage state is just getting stronger and stronger. You know, it's all about reward on hit these days, uh, but Peep not getting plenty of reward per hit here and also just kind of winning neutral more. Uh, and he says, you know what? I think my plan's actually going to work. Uh, that is a brave man to be to be boxing yeah. with that TNT. He Again, talked out a fire move. I'm just like, are you sure, my man? He Apparently, is a huge, is. Yeah, he's a huge labber. Again, huge student of the game. So I, I imagine that he knew exactly how that interaction would happen. You know, there's no surprises for this guy. Uh, for those who don't know, Peanut is the best player from South Carolina. Uh, has been for quite a while now. And wow, that is 59% damage. You know what? Honestly, for a Steve combo, not that much. Yeah, exactly. Subpar. Oh, tosses him <laughs> up right there, but great tech from my man D-Dog trying to go ahead and apply this pressure here. And that is going to be a big tool right there. Is that back air? Particularly the, the, the weak hit can actually knock away a lot of these projectiles. It's disjointed enough to both challenge Peepnut and then also threaten to confirm into that killing stronger second hit. Is Quandale from MD? Wait, yeah, where's Quandale uh, Quandale Tri-State. Tri-State, okay. So, uh... Trying to test his metal here down here in MVVA. Uh, you know, these two are huge favorites to win this tournament, either one of them. And uh, I'm just really excited to see how this ends up working out. Right now, it is so even. And a nice little confirm the drag down back air into the turnaround up tilt. He makes it look so easy. Remember how I talked about this character having trouble killing? <laughs> well, not, he is out here trying to correct me. Student of the game, indeed. That's one of those setups that if you get consistent with that, they just explode. Like, that is a strong move. Speaking of explode, though, Diamond yeah. on deck. The tool is available. And now, um... Yeah, suddenly, suddenly Peep not playing a heavy character doesn't seem like it matters that much. Yeah, it's so, uh, it's such a thing to deal with that, it, oh. you know, if you're even with Steve going to the last stock, you're losing. Because he's going to have diamond by that point. You need to build up a lead beforehand or this will happen to you. Every exactly. hit doing so much damage and the average kill percent is just so low when you have that on deck. I dig the last little parry right there. Usually Leap Shield is such a solid option that just kind of like locks you in shield. There's very little you can do about it. A little oh, bit of a preemptive so explosion on that, though. Great I delay think, by Beep Nut. Yeah, I think that uh, the, oh, wow. Excellent job going down I, there and finding that. That is not OK. That yeah, man no. had a minute and a half to punish after that mine card. He swung immediately with a forward air, and then he just delayed it for so long that yeah. I genuinely don't know what Peep Nut could do. Yeah, he just waited and saved his double jump. I'm pretty sure the Crash Bomber is what blew oh, that up. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right, and immediately detonated it. That's crazy. Yeah, because it's, uh, you know, fire actually sets it off. Oh, my goodness. Avoiding the first hitbox, and D-Dog says, I can just swing again. It doesn't exactly. matter. Have you seen my second hitbox, though? <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> and He's look at two. that. No emotion on either player. Boop. This is just, like, another day at the office. We got time to go ahead and consider what we're doing. And honestly, Beebnut, I didn't feel like he's, a, he's the type of player to take a minute between each game. Like, he, a lot of players yeah. just, like, run it back immediately. No, Beebnut takes a minute. He calm, cool, collected, considers his options for the counter pick, and then he considers his game plan. So I'm curious to see what we're going to see if the adaptation happens here as the set goes longer. Yeah, big thinker, Peebnut. Uh, you know, he, he takes his time. He doesn't want to rush anything. And wow, that's going to be a lot of damage from that Leaf Shield here. And uh, just sort of holding D-Dog in the corner. It's going to be all about how long he can keep him off the stage. 
43% so far. <laughs> and then he just walks forward with the up tilt menacingly. That man is just, he understands exactly what his win condition is here is at low percent. Those up tilts have been clashing with the lemons. So if you just get one clash, he's like, I'm going to keep hitting my up tilt. I hope you keep hitting lemons. Yeah, and what you were talking about earlier where uh, you feel like punish game characters are sort of becoming a really big thing in today's meta. Um, it, this is a very interesting matchup because Mega Man might have the best neutral in the game. Like, it's up there, you know? Oh, certainly. Uh, so this is two completely different character archetypes. You're not going to get that much per hit with Mega Man. However, he does have the tools to just keep hitting you and not letting you back to stage. And here we go. Look at that. Just fights hit after hit after hit. Not true combos. Just taking advantage of the fact that he has more options than you. And you know what I'm super impressed by with Peanut? He's not just getting his hits by tossing out a bunch of hitboxes. He's approaching from the most awkward angles that, that Quan Do can't cover. Like, it just feels like 45 degree angle on the on the metal blade down or he'll go ahead and just jump over you with the, um, the down air and then just make it safe. It, it feels as though you never understand when Peabun is going to commit, or if he is going to commit, what angle it's going to be from. I love the use of the up-close lemons there to create some space. And look at all these angles. Peabun was cooking for a second. D-Dog shut it down, but something crazy was about to happen. Oh, and just fully commits on that forward smash right here. We are going to get the spike hitbox on that forward air. Good DI from Peabun, making sure that that one isn't true. Okay, he looked like he was going to try to come down with a heavy knuckle, the down air, but the pressure plate was hidden right on the other <laughs> side of the TNT. I think Guandil might have been cooking up a little bit of a trap. Peebnut uh, in a much better position than he was last game. Like I said, you really do have to build up a lead versus Steve, or things can get out of hand so fast with that diamond on the last stock. Uh, and look at the resources here for D-Dog. Town and City coming in clutch. He has zero iron. I think Peebnut picked this on purpose, knowing that oh, he's yeah. going to be getting mostly wood here. That's definitely one of those where top players, I hope you got your flashcards ready here to remember what Steve resources are available on which oh, yeah. stages because peep not, we know this man's got that memorized. And look at the confirm right there again. The back air going to seal the deal. And look at this, 119. Peep not hasn't been threatened yet this game. Yeah, he sort of seems to have figured it out a little bit. Uh, let's see if he can keep this consistency the whole way through. I love these little chip hits he's finding. Never really committing Never finding, uh, never going for like a big read where he stands to get punished. He's just finding the moments where he can find a little bit of damage over and over and over again. Not committing, that's that's a perfect way to describe this. It just feels as though we have not seen Peepnut once toss out an unsafe approach. Maybe there, maybe yeah, that was a little bit unsafe. He went for the back air immediately <laughs> when, when D-Dog was directly above him. A little bit unsafe that time. Oh wow, this could be big. No, okay, yeah. For, uh, for those who don't know at home, never jump in the middle of that no. move. Yeah, that ends very badly every single time. A oh, wow, though, that is some fast damage, like I said, with the diamond. Uh, we just got to hope, or Peebnut fans got to hope, that the lead is enough that this diamond doesn't just erase this last stock. We have an opportunity there, but oh no, the last hitbox right there, Minecar intercepting Peepnut's attempt at a back here to seal the deal. Now instead, Crash Bomber again uh -oh. getting snatched away. This is where you do not want to be. Ooh. You do not want to find yourself in the corner with Quandale Steve having a full head of steam. Yeah, I'm not sure what Quandale was going for there, but it was going to be nasty. I can guarantee that. Don't get forward smashed and die at 60, please. I'm begging it you. It could happen. This is the Steve conundrum. KK Slider here cheering on these players. I love tournaments on Saturdays for that reason. Oh, yeah, for sure. But so far here, again, no iron on d Dog's side. He barely has any oh, stone, no. but he can't get a punish right there. No punish whatsoever on Peepnut's side. So now, reset back to neutral here. He uses his one mine card, and Peepnut was 100% ready for that one. Has the strong and fresh forward air ready to get that kill. And what was a dominant game too? Got a little <laughs> bit dicey at the yeah. end right there. Turned into a bit of a nail biter. And you know what? Uh, you know how in Melee, there's just like a gimme stage? Where, you know, uh, in a lot of matchups, it's like, okay, I'm just going to lose versus this character. Like, Mark, Mark on Final FD. D, yep, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, I feel like there might be a little bit of that going on here, right? Like, he barely won on the Town and City counter pick. Uh, could the fact that he lost game one really come to, to bite him in the butt later on? That could be really problematic here, but I think... One thing that's actually weighing the table on Peepnut's side, though, is the fact that I think that no player gets better as the set goes on like Peepnut. It just feels yeah, as though absolutely. when we get to game fives, I can't remember ever seeing him lose one. Yeah, he's very cerebral, definitely uh, studying his opponent and not just you know, trying to find his confirms or, you know, changing up his game plan. He's looking for habits the whole time, and he's going to find some. 
what was that? He actually down aired and yeah. he canceled it so he could immediately dash attack. These little like Mega Man techs are always so sick. I learn something new every time I watch this man play. Yeah, I once had a session with him for a few hours and one thing he kept hitting me with was the down air shield lock into grab and it was just true. You yeah. just can't do anything about it. It's crazy. Yeah, I think I, I played one set with him and game one was like super close and then I never hit him again, it felt like. <laughs> game two is <was> absolutely <laughs> hopeless because he just understood exactly what I was trying to do. It's that adaptation that I keep bringing up here. Feels like he understands what's going on here. Trying to get that little Z-drop shenanigan going with the Metal Blade, but not quite able to connect. So the answer back here from D-Dog is starting to look uh -oh. a little bit devastating here. Do we even have a double jump? Okay, we do. Thank okay, God. Okay, good was stall. Excellent stall, and D-Dog actually getting hit by his own Dynamite, giving Peanut another lease on life here, and the heavy Robot Man gonna just barely survive. See, that time it didn't blow up. I gotta wonder why. Yeah, this is... TNT is a mystery to everybody at this point. <laughs> it feels like there's maybe two or three Steve mains that know exactly what to do with it every single time, but sometimes Fire gets, sometimes doesn't. Maybe it's the range of the Crash Bomber. And suddenly, Peanut looking a lot better this game, and that back air edge guard going to do it. The Crash Bomber uh, that connects, even when you have invulnerability, they're going to actually buy him a little bit of time to find another opening and already 32% in an advantage state. Can he build the lead that we've seen he needs? He's just so slippery, man. It feels like two or three times he approaches from one angle, D-Dog tries to punish it, and then already he's reverses momentum with a B-reverse or a wave bounce. I love that. D-Dog's trying to mine and Peanut is just nope. tickling him with the lemon saying, nope. Nope, you're gonna take one percent every time you hit that B button. I mean, that's that's a tilt maker right there. That every time like you just hear that sound come out and you just get tapped for three percent and it interrupts what you're trying to do. It just every I can maybe deal with two or three before I just run across the stage at him. It's like <laughs> it's I, like, I want to hit you right now. Yeah. It's like I need you to stop at it and I need you to know how much it's annoys me. D Dog's up there actually beating the down air from P. Um, I think there was going to be some kind of crazy conversion off of that, but not going to happen. And Peep just playing it patient, saying, I'm just going to find my percent. You know, the big thing is he's just not putting himself in a position where he could die. Agreed. You know what I mean? Like, he's he might take some damage. He might get hit. But he knows the hits that D-Dog wants, and his main goal is just to avoid them. Yep, just non-committal at its finest right here. This is, in fact, a neutral. We're di When you're dying at 171 against a character that can kill you at zero, you know that you're doing your job. All right, obstacle course is out. What kind of Kaizo Mario nonsense is Kwan have planned right here? Oh, uh -oh, just, just, uh, just going to walk the dog. That's an easy yeah. one. Yeah. Thank you, God. Save the dogs, you know, at the Cantankerous Clash. <laughs> He's got the power up versus the canines, so. <laughs> but can't quite get that confirmed right there off of the minecart. Gets the out of shield punish on the up smash. So solid full stock lead here. It's like you said, Joe, it's, if you are have that full stock lead, now we're even. Yeah. And you know what? Getting hit by the Crash Bomber while you have the invulnerability is so frustrating. Because it takes a situation where you're used to just having free pressure and makes you have to worry about uh, getting hit by that and actually getting reversal. Between and it can be incredibly and frustrating. And between that and Rush, rather? Oh, yeah. Too, where that can just like send you super high if you're not immediately fast falling and trying to cancel with an aerial? Yeah, it's just like an entire situation. Mega Man just gets to skip sometimes. Yeah, just, oh, you have invuln? I don't have to put up with it. Get out of here. Trying to go ahead and get that Crash Bomber to down air. You know he was looking for it, but the distance wasn't quite right. So again, good patience by Peanut to pull up. Yeah, Peanut just now lapping D-Dog's percent. And that's what he needs. You know, uh, we'll see if it's a repeat of the last game where D-Dog finds this kill and then brings it close. Uh, again, that extra percent matters so much versus Steve. Trying to get that down tilt too. That was would have been a really good confirm if he managed to snatch that stock up with that, but instead the back air. Oh, he tried to actually get his double jump reset, but the Crash Bomber actually going to put him in a really awkward spot. Every nickel, every dime, every time a lemon connects is going to be huge for Peanut, but that uh, side B going to be huge for D-Dog. 100%, we have seen Steve's do this over and over. Oh, yeah. This is do not blink territory right here. It doesn't matter who has the lead. All we need is that one single combo starter here from D-Dog. We'll have an even game That's or it. a game over. Take a look at D-Dog's resources, though. Very, very low on stuff to throw at Peanut. Uh, actually, only one block left, and the block that was remaining saves him from that dare. Oh, but an excellent trump, trump. Yes. Saving that for when it
else. He didn't go for that a single time this set until the moment where it was going to win him a game. Stock three chumps, man. That's the secret hit. Absolutely. Right there. It's like you always go ahead and just wait. You never want to put it in your opponent's mind at an early stock because then they understand what to do when they see you dashing an edge. That is a reactable thing that you can go ahead and try to punish. So now I'm curious if in the next couple games, if we're going to see D-Dog start to react to that and then Peepnut has the next level where you dash at edge, don't go for the trump and then punish the hasty get up option. Yeah, these are the layers you only see at this top, top level of play. Uh, like we're witnessing at the moment, you know, people adapt and they counter adapt and they counter counter adapt and it just gets so complicated. Uh, it takes a really, really, really strong player to get to that level. And now, interesting stage selection here, going with the smaller one, so perhaps trying to limit Peep Nuts' room to run. Only problem is I have seen him do disgusting things with up air on this stage. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of disgusting things with up air, 58% from D Dog. Uh, and he is going to continue this advantage state, but Peebnut swinging back, uh, and it's not going to end in tragedy for the Mega Man. It does feel as though this will take away some of those trickier angles from Peebnut's approach options. Though it does actually take away those down airs from D-Dog too. So a little bit of benefit for both players. And right here, that board smash very nearly claiming the stock. It felt like that was maybe 5% or so away from connecting. Nothing you can do. That is a checkmate nope. as soon as that cart touches your shield. Uh, I gotta wonder, how did we end up on a wooden stage again? I wonder if it's just like not that important or if there's other things that Steve likes about Smashville that makes it worth it to get slightly worse resources. If it was me, I'm, I'm betting it's the size. I'm betting it's just that he's been catching on to the fact that Peepnot has been just basically hitting him with shimmies. This yeah. entire set has just been movement options from Peepnut that create those neutral openings. Here, you have to work so much harder for it. And then again, if we see that one hit from D-Dog, he's going to turn it into ledge pressure. And that's where Steve really thrives. That is certainly true. Um, and one great thing that has uh, happened for Peepnut here is that he now has the counterpick advantage back from winning two games in a row. So even if he loses this one, he gets his choice in game five. And that might make a massive difference. Trying to go ahead and land, but cannot do so aggressively with that down air. d Dog playing on fire here, my man, is looking like he took a moment to compose himself. He's got that extra adaptation here. The stage pick definitely coming in clutch, too. Diamond up to it on your shield, knocking at the door, says, honey, I'm home. Here's Johnny. Yeah, exactly. That's one of those. <laughs> if you hear this man knock and do not answer. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta go ahead and wait that out. Yeah, if that up tilt hits you, you are going for a ride. Gets the trump Ooh. again, but this time good immediate buffered option. And then the up B rushing out of disadvantage, not typically an option we see too frequently for Mega Man's, saving it for those spots where you don't think the opponent is ready for it. And Peanut needs to find this ASAP. This is a uh, bad situation to be in versus Steve. Can't get the punish, so that's gonna be a free up smash. Solid damage right here, and good presence of mind here from Glondale, recognizing that you're not going to get the kill at 90%, so just get yourself a max damage punish without actually committing any resources. But the nice. grab, very committal there, so the up tilt easily going to claim that one. Yeah, excellent. Uh, whiff punish there from Peebnut. The, you know, Mega Man has some stuff that can make this happen, uh, but Quandale doing an excellent job of maintaining this lead so far. What was that interaction there? Did you see the crash? Yeah, like, slowed it like down. slowed down. Yeah, very strange. I saw one earlier, I didn't mention it, uh, where the Crash Bomber hit Steve and he started walking and the Crash Bomber just hung in the air where yeah. Steve was. Very odd. Can you tell that they didn't play test to Fighter Pass 2? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't like going to say it, but yeah. <laughs> these characters just have a lot of like weird interactions and it's always just like, huh, I guess, I guess you get that as DLC. Yeah, I guess when you make such a complicated character like this and then you don't patch him, <laughs> strange things happen. <laughs> yeah. All right, now this is plenty of resources for a minute did D-Dog have, but now we are already out of iron. We have plenty uh -oh. of diamonds, but now off stage, a high recovery, but can't oh, get the no. up tilt, and that is it. Peebnot goes for it all with that haymaker of an up tilt, and I have to question that decision because I don't think it would have killed. No, I don't think it quite does it here unless you're DIing quite badly. Um... It would have been good damage, a nice advantage state, but if you're not sure you're going to get that punish, yeah, not worth it. The thing about those laggy, punishable kill options is that if you go for them and they miss, you see the problem. It felt mm -hmm. as though we were starting to see Beatnut really claw his way back right there, so it's really hard to see that match end so abruptly. Peanut stone cold, no emotion on his face. He knows this is a big game. 
This is going to be very important. The difference between winners, uh, winners finals and losers semis is a big deal. And can we talk about the killers we have in loser bracket too? Like, oh, yeah. you're going to be fighting either like Pup, Pup A yeah. or VV Ling, like the loser of that. Like, I, I, maybe Fawn. I don't want to fight none of those folks. Yeah, I want these are all to be people. sitting pretty in grands. These are almost all people who have one big regionals of their own of this size, so. Oh, can't quite connect with that back air and still able to chase it down, though. Good reversal right there from Guanel trying to go ahead and get some more damage, but not quite going to connect. So back to the corner for more materials. See, there it was again. The crash bomber just yep, sort of hanging exactly. in the air. Kind of weird. <laughs> Definitely an odd interaction. Peevnut with a good start here, and he did get Town and City, which has served him pretty well. Oh, wow. Great Just spacing. a raw F smash, yeah. Waiting it out right here is Gwandale just trying to get a little bit extra resources going. And so far, Peep not more than content to sit at this mid-distance. But that's the problem oh, is that wow. you never know when Steve's going to burst out of the corner with those empowered minecarts. Yeah, Steve's options killing just so, so early. Uh, and you really just have to be looking out for it at all times. But speaking of looking out for things, that excellent SDI to pop out of the uh, forward air spike and then up tilt as an answer. Oh, you That's... thought that was safe on hit, my man? Yeah, that was genius. Definitely a good option right there from Beebnut. Now trying to get Steve stuck in the corner, and that's a cool little interaction, oh. isn't it? The up air actually pulled him out of the minecart. Yeah, and he actually reset it into another crash bomber, but that comes to bite him in the butt. He actually gets hit by the crash bomber himself. And this could be bad. The big combo coming out and actually finishing with a back air. Huge damage there, even if it's not quite going to kill. Not just could be. That was awful. Right there. That What a momentum stopper from D-Dog. Tons of damage plus full stage control. Now D-Dog just again playing very patiently, choosing his spots well. But Crash Bomber is going to lock him into shield and look at the shield damage right there. Committing immediately with that forward smash, just knowing that there's absolutely nothing that D-Dog can do in that spot. D-Dog always ready to tech those. You know, it's such a great resource to have, the blocks to uh, keep you from dying at those percents. We have such an even game five here. Yeah, D-Dog had that one big combo, and he hasn't really, like, hit Peep not more than once afterwards. It's been a while, but wow, just up B to center stage and then F smash. <laughs> That's I mean, one option. These are options, not ones that I would have picked or thought about, but good God, are they options. Yeah, oh, you're locked in? No. So he no longer has the shovel, but he does still have the pickaxe and the sword. And you know what? That might be enough. Good interception right there with the metal blade, but now plenty of time right here. Trying to go ahead and oh. get that wall built <laughs> that up. That was lucky. <laughs> Look at the damage. This game has collapsed here from Peepnut. He needs the opportunity to play neutral, but so far D-Dog not giving him a moment's respite. Oh, just the patient waiting for the bounce off rush and d -Dog Finding the back air he needs to seal out a clutch game five. I mean, that last stock was so brutal by D Dog. It just, like, what did Peep not have the opportunity to do? It, it felt like he was just getting, he got hit once for like 70 damage, and then oh, he was yeah. getting batted across the stage with that diamond tool and those empowered options. It, he just did not have the opportunity to play the game. All of a sudden, we were playing single player here. Yeah, that platform giving D-Dog an excellent place to sort of stage his defense. Uh, and then he just sort of plays the spacing game. Says, I have longer range options than you. And you know what? If you hit me out of the corner, I go to center stage. If I hit you, you die. The risk reward is very much not in your favor here. The aerial drift call out by Mega Man catching.